Hello and welcome to Left Brain Artist. Today we have episode one of a multi-part series for beginner acrylic paint pours. Today we're going to talk about the history of acrylic paint pouring and a little bit about the science behind acrylic paint pouring. I think understanding the science behind acrylic paint pouring will actually make you a better acrylic paint pouring artist. For those of you that don't know me, my name is David Voorhees. I am a computer technologist by trade. I have been doing that for about 15 years. I love to play basketball. I love to cook and pretty much do anything related to technology. Uh, a couple of years ago, I got interested in acrylic paint pouring uh, after binging on um, a bunch of pictures from Pinterest and Instagram and YouTube. And come to find out, a left-brained nerd like myself can actually be quite successful with acrylic paint pouring. And one of the reasons why I built this channel is because I want to make sure that all of you guys out there that don't really think you're artistic, I'm telling you right now, you can acrylic paint pour. And this is the uh, first series that you should watch to get introduced to it and get on your acrylic paint pouring journey. So just a quick intro to some of the work that I've done. This is a tree ring pour. that I've done. This was a blown pour. A negative space with gray pour. Just a simple dirty cup with blues and whites. And then a red, white, and blue. Uh, it turned out to be a galaxy pour, but um, and again this is something that I learned from watching videos like this, from experimenting, and I think that is the best way for you to learn how to acrylic paint pour. So a little bit on the history of acrylic paint pouring. Uh, it is thought to have started with the Mexican artist David Alfaro Siqueiros. Uh, he was a fresco artist, and one day he was working with some paints that were a little bit thinner than he was normally used to. And in doing that, he poured... Uh, some white paint on top of some black paint and he said that the painting actually painted itself and into some letters to his girlfriend he called this his accidental painting and a few years later a art historian Sandra Zetina um, inspired by Siqueiros went to try and test some of the things that he learned and she got together with Roberto Zenit who is a physics professor and they started to do some of the tests that uh, Siqueiros did with acrylic paint pouring. So one of the tests that they did is they took a surface, probably glass or something like that, that they could record from uh, up above and below, and they poured black paint on a surface, and then they poured white paint on top of the surface. And they recorded on both sides, and they noticed that the paint had some strange interactions that it was doing. And then they did the exact same thing the opposite. They poured white paint and they put black paint on top and it actually didn't do the same thing. The black paint just sat on top and it didn't interact like the white paint interacted. And come to find out the reason for that was some of the properties of uh, fluid dynamics. So there's an excellent video uh, about Zetina and Zenit and what they did which I will post here wherever it is on the screen. Uh, I would highly recommend looking at that video and getting an idea of what they were doing and why it's important for you as a beginner acrylic paint pouring artist. So I'm going to get a little geeky on you here, but I think it's very important that you understand some of the concepts that are happening behind the science of acrylic paint pouring in order for you to manipulate your paints how you want them to going forward. So we're going to talk about the Riley Taylor instability. We're going to talk about surface tension and we're going to talk about adhesion and cohesion. So really quickly first, the Riley Taylor instability has to do with two liquids that are different densities. So just like with cicados, if you have a layer of paint, and we'll call this um, we'll call it black paint, and then you layer on white paint on top. So white paint is more dense than black paint. What ultimately is going to happen 
is that white paint is going to start seeping through. Generally, it's going to happen on little sections like this. And it's going to start seeping through the black paint. And then the black paint is going to move up through the white paint. So the, the Raleigh-Taylor instability is at that point where they make contact how gravity and how the density of those paints pulls the heavier paint down and that in turn pulls the lighter paint up. So the next thing we want to talk about is surface tension and cohesion. So if you've ever noticed, I don't know if you've ever done this experiment, but if you put a cup of water and very gently place a needle on that water, it will float, even though steel needle is obviously more dense than water. What happens is you have all these little water particles, molecules, in the cup. And each of these water molecules have an attraction toward the water molecules that are near them. And that attraction is called cohesion. They attract to each other. Now one of the differences between the, the water molecules down here and the water molecules up here is we have gas and air up above. So I have nothing to attract to. So these bonds tend to be stronger. And what happens is these bonds, because they're stronger, create what's called surface tension along the surface of the liquid. And that surface tension is what's holding the needle up if you did that. And as soon as that surface tension breaks, like if you hit, pushed on the needle, it would just fall into the water. Same thing with paint. When you have paint that's like molecules, those molecules adhere to each other and you get surface tension along the top. So if you put a paint that's less dense, not only does the surface tension keep the paint from interacting, um, but then again we don't get that Riley-Taylor instability to, to take action. And one thing about surface tension, if you heat up a surface, it actually breaks up the surface tension, or if you, if you add some additives to paint, you can break the surface tension so you can force that interaction to happen, which you'll see in some of the later courses in this module. So the last part I want to talk about is adhesion. So adhesion is a little different in that I have a surface. Let's say I have my paint on this surface. Adhesion is how two different surfaces um, attract. So this is my canvas. So my canvas is actually attracting to the paint, and the paint is attracting to the ca canvas. That's called adhesion. So what you'll notice is if you pour paint onto a canvas and then you tilt the canvas one way or the other, the paint's going to start to move. But what happens is right at the point where the paint and the canvas interact, you've got adhesion, and so the paint actually is going to adhere to the canvas, and it's going to be this paint up here that's going to move. And it's going to move in waves. And it's going to do this. And you're going to see that this paint here that's freer to move is going to roll over the top of this paint as it's adhering to the canvas. So that's important to you because when you pour paints on top of a canvas and then you start to move it, this is going to move very quickly and it's going to stretch any patterns that you have on the top of your paint. One thing that people do is, example on this side, is they add a little bit of paint to the whole canvas. And then, when they're tilting the paint to this side, rather than flow over the top of each other, kind of like waves, it just kind of moves this way. So you get much less um, stretching of your paints. And uh, again, very important for when you go to stretch your first paint, and you get it too stretched out or not stretched out enough, you can change where the paint lies on the canvas in order to help with that. So today we learned a little bit about the history of acrylic paint pouring. We learned about uh, some of the science behind paint pouring, the Raleigh-Taylor instability, the cohesion of like molecules, and adhesion of unlike molecules. Uh, comment below 
what you've learned in this course and any other questions that have come up from this so we can address them in the next episodes. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified when the next episode comes out. And if you enjoyed this content, please hit a like. It does help our channel, and we do appreciate that.